we're so excited that you're all here. This is, gonna, this is really an incredible gathering of, of experts on the exposome as, as widely defined, and um, almost all UC researchers. So this is actually our 12th year of meeting together and having an annual symposium related to obesity. And so uh, it's just gotten better and better over time, but we did um, start off with Barbara Lariah, Nancy Adler, and I leading a small group saying there's nothing, such a low status underrepresented field, let's, let's gather the forces, people interested in obesity. And of course, uh, during this time, the epidemic has grown and we've had uh, more and more uh, colleagues. And so this is really, um, the culmination, really, it's, the, it's also the last year of our grant. So it is our uh, last symposium, unless we'll see. UC funds us again. But we, are, um, we choose a different topic related to obesity. So we have covered uh, stress, sugar addiction, pregnancy, sleep. There's just no shortage of topics, of factors that affect obesity. And this year, we are focusing on the environment and chemical exposures. And this topic has just become so much more important with time. It's an interesting topic because our mind is really not equipped to understand something invisible and long-term, a threat like climate change. And so how do we, as individual humans, react to such a threatening topic? Today, we're going to hear a lot of very disturbing science, but, but don't fret, we're also going to be hearing solutions and what we can do individually. So what happens psychologically when you hear this information? There are, this has been well studied, and there are two modal responses. One is feeling helpless, hopeless, despair, and then you really can't live like that all the time, so there's denial, there's apathy, you don't do anything, it's not activating. You can't keep it in the forefront. It's not motivating. The other response is being overly optimistic, because that's the, uh, the only other way of easily just coping with this, of, of thinking it will work out. So as a society, we've pushed this off to it's the next generation's problem. That hasn't worked well. What we need to do is find that middle path, which is engagement with optimism. The cake is not fully baked. There are, we are in the midst of climate change, but what we do today absolutely matters, and that's what we're going to hear about today. I was born in the 60s. My parents, David and Lois, are here. They were activists and marched against DDT. <laughs> I have more DDT in me than my younger colleagues here. So there are, uh, there are, let's just say, irreversible effects of what's happening in the world right now chemical factories across the world, the air we're breathing right here and in our home. Invisible, but important. And we are all connected to each other, to each other's behavior, to our environment. So that is the grand theme. And the exciting thing is that we are, in our lives here, empowered to do what we can. We are hearing precious information. And the question at the end of the day is, what will you personally do with this in your own life? So thank you also to, um, we had a beautiful meditation this morning, for those of you who missed it, by Eve Ekman, that was um, experiential interdependence rather than just intellectual. So our planning committee, I just want a quick thanks. You will see a slide of each of their faces. We had representatives from most UC campuses who donated their time over the last six months to, to carefully plan this, um, and especially my thanks to Samantha. So I'm going to just give you a brief preview of the day. The introductions are going to be really short. We want you to hear the speakers. Everyone's bio is online on our COAST website. We're going to, um, Tracy, my co-chair in this, I could not have asked for a better co-chair, Tracy Woodrow, Woodruff, who is a world leader in understanding environmental exposures and health, particularly developing fetuses and how um, pregnancy is such a critical period. She has started an environmental health initiative at UCSF. She and her colleagues are hopefully about to have a NIH send at Earth uh, Research Center here at UCSF. So just tremendously exciting things happening with environmental health. 
So we're going to go over just the, th um, the three general pillars of the exposome of social of exposures and how they get into our body. The first session is social exposures, stress, poverty, neighborhood stress. The second is chemical exposures. We're going to hear from leading scientists about the cutting edge of basic science, what we know, what we think is happening with certain chemicals. And then lastly, what's in our diet? We're going to have a policy panel of phenomenal uh, people who are actually working on policy change. And that's, of course, one of the, our most essential solutions um, for our climate. And then we end with a very practical session. What chemicals are stored in our body that are linked to cognitive decline, to dementia? And if you can clean out the body of those chemicals, can you actually improve cognition or even reverse dementia? So we have one of the world's experts, a clinician researcher, Dale Bredesen. And then lastly, we have Wolfram Alderson, who will talk about what you can do. Um, so I, just to kick off our day, we're blessed to have Dan Lowenstein, our cherished executive vice chancellor and provost, also the vice chair of neurology. Um, he's been such an amazing advocate for the work our faculty do across UCSF, but also for so for our um, sugar stress weight initiative. So for example, Laura Schmidt, my co-director of so and I had led a group, many in this room, um, who, to really examine what happens when you ban sugared beverages from a whole institution. Does it really make a difference? So um, he has used some of his precious resources to help that evaluation. We just pushed that paper out the door, and hopefully the world will hear about it soon. It was very exciting and promising. It makes UCSF a real leader to the world by both banning sugared beverages and showing the the benefits to people. He's also um, a physician and researcher in epilepsy and has his own interest in the exposome, as you'll hear. Thank you, Dan. So thank you for the introduction. And it's really a pleasure to uh, briefly uh, be here to kick off uh, an amazing day. I'm, uh, I'm here representing the leadership of UCSF. And I want to deliver two simple messages, but they're important. The first is, welcome to UCSF. Uh, this this university is a very special place. Um, it's one of the great universities of the world. And uh, I think a lot of us believe that the great things that happen here come from the fact that we are laser focused on one aspect of the world. And that is the ability to try and lessen the suffering that humans experience and to do everything that we possibly can to improve health. That's all that we do here at UCSF. And it's the reason why we're able to collect such remarkable people, our faculty, our trainees, our staff, our visitors like you, to come here and to think about that mission. The second mes message is, on behalf of the leadership, to deeply, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for the work that you're doing to advance this mission. Um, as, you've, as you've already kind of heard, um, I'm into what you're doing. Um, there, there's no question, absolutely no question in my mind that you are at the cutting edge of an area of, of the human endeavor that we have not been thinking about until very recently. And we absolutely have to understand in order for us to make the world a better place. There's no question in my mind. And just to emphasize that, I wanted, I, the slides that I would have shown, it's pretty simple. Um, I do work in epilepsy research. I care about patients with epilepsy. Uh, I could go on and on as to how much we uh, need to understand further the nature of their illnesses in order to provide the kinds of therapies, preventative and otherwise, to rid the world of epilepsy. My focus has come to the genetics of epilepsy. So with many, many other people around the world, we've been drilling in, diving into the genes to the base pair changes that are the basis of certain forms of epilepsy. And we've made some fantastic discoveries. But what we've come to realize over the last number of years is that this is only one of many levels of understanding that are required in order to fully understand and be able to come up with the therapies uh, to cure epilepsy. And the slide shows uh, a model of 
how we think about precision medicine with multiple layers, starting, if you will, at the bottom of the genome, and then the transcriptome, and then the physiome, and at the top is the exposome. And the analogy of this multi-layered map for precision medicine is Google Earth. And so the other part of the slide shows the multiple levels. And so if you think for a moment, okay, where am I? What, what am I doing here? And what is it around me that matters? Think about the multiple levels that Google Earth allows us to have. Everything from the, uh, uh, the view from the moon of the Earth all the way down to this specific location, the weather, the traffic patterns, um, and other aspects of the environment that define our presence in this moment. So this is what we need in order to solve the problems of, of, of health and disease. And in my world of epilepsy, we've now come to realize that we have to take a look at the exposome. We need to understand how our patients are exposed to toxins, to chemicals, to the social environment, to the health policies that affect whether they have access to care, to the food that they eat, which affects their microbiome, which I'm sure alters the ability for the medications we give them to even work, let alone how their food affects the excitability of the nervous system. So I've been so excited about the opportunity that we have in my field of neuroscience and epilepsy of taking on the exposome as an area that has absolutely not been looked at at all. If you do, if you do a PubMed search right now and expose on, on, on epilepsy, someone go and do it. I'm pretty sure it's zero. So anyway, with that, again, the two messages, welcome to UCSF. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and thank you for doing the important work that you're doing. Um, have a really, really fantastic day. Thank you. <laughs>